Hello and welcome, I'm Catherine and this is my tutorial Needle Felt a Robin, just like this little guy here. So needle felting is creative, it's relaxing and it's really addictive. Once you get started on your first project you'll just want to do more and more and the time will just go by and you'll forget about all those stresses in and the chaos of everyday life. This tutorial is aimed at a complete beginner, so somebody who's never needle felted before and perhaps never even done anything creative before. I'll take you through step by step everything you need to know and if you get stuck or find anything tricky you can just pause and rewind. You can watch this tutorial over and over again and create many many robins or variations of robins. For those of you who have needle felted before, this tutorial might be handy at providing you with some tips, things that maybe you've not thought of before, a different way of doing things, and indeed everybody needle felts completely differently. I'm hoping that yourself as, as doing this tutorial that you'll find your own style too um, and put your own spin on, on something and find your own comfortable way uh, of needle felting so that you're, you're enjoying it to the max. Just a brief note on safety, the needle felt needles are super sharp, they're supposed to be super sharp, um, so as a beginner you might prick yourself a few times, it might hurt, you're not going to do any serious injury, so don't worry about that, um, but I'd say any youngsters just keep them supervised. I do sell kits and perhaps you're watching this because you've purchased one of my kits, thank you for the purchase. I sell them from my Etsy shop and that's got everything you need in that kit apart from three items, three simple household items that most of you will have at home. A pair of scissors, a cup of water, just regular tap water and a household sponge. If you've got an upholstery sponge, great because they're a bit deeper, otherwise just a kitchen scouring sponge or just a sponge for use in the shower, any kind of sponge and I'll explain why you need that later but get those three items ready along with your kit. Sit down with a cup of tea in front of a laptop or a tablet or even your phone, you could be watching this on, a on your phone and just put some time aside for yourself to complete your own little friend. Now I'm going to open my kit and run through the materials that you need to complete this project. If you ordered and had delivered a kit from me, now's the time to open it up and check each item off along with me. If I missed anything, uh, then please do get in touch and I'll be able to provide a replacement. If you're providing your own bits and pieces from home, then you'll need to watch this bit too and just make sure you've got all the bits and pieces you need. So here's the kit that I set up and let's go through everything that you get. Some brown wool and it can be Corydale wool, Merino wool, it just needs to be felting wool, so felting fibres, not knitting wool, you can see it's, it's fibre wool, that's what we're going to use. It can be in any brownie colour or actually um, it can be brownie grey, so if you've only got grey at home that would be fine to use too. There's some great British wools out there, some Nepalese wools are quite nice, um, all of these make good wool for needle felting. Other wools you'll need are going to be some, ideally, in my kit you get some red and some orange and that's going to make up the nice colour shading on his, on, his, on his breast. If you've only got red or only got orange at home, that's fine too, you can just use those. And some black, and this black wool is going to make up his eyes and his beak you get the core inner wool. Now this is uh, insulation wool, it's 100%, you can pull it 100% wool, you can pull it apart but we're going to use it in sheet format which is how I, I buy it. It's a great wool to use for needle felting because it compacts really nicely as you're felting. 100% natural, eco-friendly wool and it will help you when you come to sculpting um, the features of say the eye sockets, you can see there's some shaping down the, his back, under his belly, towards his wings and it compacts quite hard. As an alternative you, to this core wool you could use a polyester stuffing or wadding, you might have some hanging around at home. That would do, it would suffice. What I would say is, in my experience, it doesn't compact in the same way because it's a synthetic material. You don't get the same level of shaping and shrinking and hardening, um, but you, you could use that if you don't have any of this to hand. So 10 centimeters square, that's included in my kit, along with a five centimeter circle that we're gonna use as the head. So have those. What else is included is your felting needle. 
and I buy mine from um, a company called Heidi Feathers and this is a red needle, red tip and it's 38 gauge. You can get them from other companies, just make sure it's a 38 gauge. Y you can get all kinds of different thicknesses and types of needles that have different effects. This is just a, a basic starter kit really um, and you'll just need this one needle. Unfortunately if you do snap it you'll need to try and get hold of some other needles out there. You can easily buy a pack of five or ten from Heidi Feathers or off Etsy, anywhere, any retailer, get yourself some felting needles as spares. Included in my kit also um, is an alcohol wipe. In these times at the moment everyone's very conscious of um, spreading infections and things like that and I think as a general rule it, it, you should keep your needles disinfected. I disinfect them before I send them out but just as a rule of thumb wipe down the needle um, before you start to use it and if you've still got the, the swab left at the end wipe it down after before you put it away um, just as just good housekeeping. You could just use uh, alcohol sanitizer, hand sanitizer on a cloth to wipe down your needles. You don't necessarily need one of these swabs. Cardboard tube inner. We're going to use this as a template for the wings and for the tail. So you could, obviously you're going to have something like this at home. Just cut a centimetre off. I've just put a bit of sellotape around to stop it unravelling. And you just, as a wing shape, you just need to pinch it at one side and keep it rounded at the other edge. And we're going to use that later on to form our wings and also to form part of our tail. Brown florist wire. Green really easy to get hold of, brown not as easy to get hold of. Included in my kit are two lengths of 30 centimetres each. <clears throat> Copper wire, jewellers use this kind of a wire. Very thin, very bendy and a gorgeous copper colour. I've included two lengths, one for each foot in the kit that I provide. If you wanted to source this yourself, you could buy it in a reel. It's not expensive, about 150, something like that. You're going to use that as decoration on the feet to add a bit of stability to the feet and also use it as decoration later on. So you've got two lengths of that in your kit. Cotton thread. You'll have some cotton thread in your pack. Not everybody has got some at home, so I've included some in my kit. We're going to use this to help us uh, put the core inner together at the beginning. So you'll need about 1.5 to 2 metres of cotton thread. Nothing special there, just regular household cotton thread. Dressmaker pins. Pretty straightforward dressmaking pins. I've included three in my kit. Not everybody has got them at home if they've not done crafts before. These are just going to help you hold some of the features like the eyes and the beak in place when we come to felting later on. Super glue, bit of a cheat, but yes, we're going to glue the feet into place with super glue at the end. Accessories. So my little Robin here, I chose to make him a little bow tie out of some leftover fabric that I had. You can choose to accessorize your Robin however you want. It doesn't have to have a bow tie. He could have a top hat, he could have a crown, he could have glasses, he could have a tie. He could be on skis. It, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. Think outside the box, be creative. But I've included two little mini satin bows um, in, the, in the kit. Twine, hanging twine. This is just a 20 centimeter length. We're going to use this to help us measure the circumference of the robin when we first start to felt but you don't you don't have to have twine what's going to double up actually if you decided to hang your robin at the end rather than have the feet or have the feet and still hanging you're going to use this and i'll show you how to put in the twine through the back and then you can have him hanging maybe hanging on a on a on a christmas tree at christmas or something like that so you just need if you've got it to hand or ribbon twine garden twine would be fine 20 centimeters and finally a cocktail stick Cocktail stick's always handy when we come to sticking the feet down at the end and you don't want to stick your fingers to your robin. Also helps making holes for the, for the feet to go in. Not everybody is going to have cocktail sticks handy at home, so I've included one in your kit. That's the kit, let's get started. So here we go. The first thing you want to take is your 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square of wadding. If it was in one of my kits, it's this exactly this eco wadding here. Otherwise you might have sourced some core wool um, uh, uh, from, from another, another source. You might have it at home or you've just made do for now with um, some stuffing, polyester stuffing out of an old quilt or an old pillow or something like that. We're gonna turn this into the body and how we do that is we, we turn it into a circle, into a ball. So I'm just gonna scrunch it up in my hand like so. So sizing wise the size that you want needs to be around 20 centimeters circumference. Any smaller you're gonna you're in danger of stabbing your fingers because it's it's almost like trying to 
prod a grape if it's if it's too much smaller and any bigger it, it's just going to be a monster rubbing you don't re you don't really want it you don't need it to be bigger and you won't have enough wool if you've bought one of my kits so we're going to use the cotton thread just to start here this cotton sewing thread around two meters of this you don't need a sewing needle and you don't need to tie any knots I'm just going to roughly and I mean rough this is a rough shape you won't see it from the outside hold the cotton in my thumb and index finger and just wrap the cotton thread around and then I'm going to turn and I'm going to wrap again just parcel it up wrap it round all different directions looking for those places where the wool is sticking out tuck it in as I say you don't need a sewing thread you don't need to tie any knots and as you reach the end I'm coming up to the end now of your 2 meters, 1.5 to 2 meters, you should be able to just tuck it in, just fold it down and it'll hold in place. And this, as you can see, is a rough ball. The 20 centimeters, this twine that I provided in my kit or use, tape measure at home, just sense check the size and the ends should roughly meet. I hope you can see that there, a little bit over, but it just needs to be about that size. If it's half a centimetre over or under, doesn't matter, that's fine. You just don't want it tiny and you don't want it massive. You're now going to use your felting needle to attach the head to the body. If you take out your felting needle, if you've got one of my kits, you'll have one of these swab wipes. This is where you would take this out and give the needle a good wipe. So, take your ball, take your head section just hold it down in place here and at the minute it's going to look like a snowman or r2d2 that kind of a, a thing it probably doesn't look anything like a robin at this point or any kind of a bird to tack that down and i'm going to turn as i go and it's around the edge of this circular section where you could imagine the neck would be so it's the point at which the head meets the body and I'm just going to keep tacking you can tack in this direction also so you don't have to just go down through the head into the body you can come upwards it's better to, to, to hold your needle in lots of different directions when you're felt in because it'll just mesh and tangle the fibres in all kinds of different directions it'll felt a bit quicker so this might take you a good five, five to ten minutes, take your time with it, there's no rush. And as I go, I'm actually going to look at the body and I'm just going to tack down, tack in, into, into position, any, any sticky out bits. And you can see how I'm just using the tip of the needle. You don't have to go like this all the way in, you don't need to do that. You're just sort of tacking down over the surface. And there we go, I've, I've fast forwarded this five minute process for the point of the demonstration video here. But you want to spend a good five minutes making sure that head is uh, pretty well tacked down. You don't want to be able to pull it off easily um, and just rounding things off so that it's kind of this snowman um, kind of shape. Okay, you've done that now, that's step number one. Put that to one side and we're going to do step number two. So step number two will be making the wings. Um, the way this uh, tutorial works is we're going to make all the individual components and then towards the end we'll assemble all those components together. So next is the wings. If you take your brown wool and you're going to need to pull off enough to make wings, take a section, take your sponge, your household sponge, like a wing shape. So squash that down into the shape that, that you want, kind of like a teardrop I guess. Place it on top of your sponge, my sponge is only just big enough there but that's okay. Um, pull away some wool and you want to fill inside like a cookie cutter, a biscuit cutter. You want to fill the inside of, of the shape. I'm actually just twizzling the wool in between my fingers before I push it down into the shape just to begin a felting process make sure all those fibres are nice and tangled up because in the end you want the wings to be quite fluffy and quite airy which will be a nice contrast to the shaped body gently roll it into a ball so it basically looks like something you have just pulled out of the drain in the shower at this point that's fine that's good and it'll be bigger because you've just messed it up and put loads of air in it squash it down into your shape and you'll know if it's too much because it won't squash down, it'll start to overspill. But you basically want to be able to, if you hold it in place, 
squash it down and you shouldn't see any more than this coming over the top of the shape okay take your felting needle and I just want you to prod this 30 times 28, 29, 30, there we go and then flip, do the same on the reverse side you should be able to just turn it over with it remaining in position 30 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 28, 29, 30, there we go take your template off and because you've only done it a few times it's not stuck to the sponge below and that's your rough shape for a wing now repeat those steps and do exactly the same for your second wing if you find that you've got too much it should be really easy to just pull some of the wool away put it to the side and try again check check the amount again and there we go two wings you can see one slightly more pointy than the other but that's okay it's really easy to just tease tease it into the shape you want it. I wouldn't worry about it too much at this stage. You've got the amount there, you've got the rough shape there. We're going to come back and perfect those into wings later on, but for now place those to one side. Another point that you'll need to do, another step at this point, is pull off enough wool to make one more wing and you should know how much that is by now. You don't need to put it in your template but we will use this later on and it's going to form the tail and a little bit of tufting on the head. So the rest of the wool will be used for the body but you don't want to not leave yourself enough wool for the tail and the tuft and maybe touching up. So I would say the same amount as you had for one of these wings. Just place that to one side with the wings and we'll come back to that. So step number three is covering the body um, that, that you've made, the core body. The way we're going to do that is to make a blanket. So if you take the remainder of your pile of wool now and you want to lay this out as best you can and as evenly as you can. And I'd say to pull the wool apart like this, te tease it so that it's a bit more open and lay it down in a square. And if you lay down a square that's approximately 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters and again if you had one of my kits and you're using one of my kits this is 20 centimeters so you can see across the bottom of the camera and a little bit further than up the side of the camera is going to be my 20 centimeters squared you want to lay fibers half of the fibers horizontally left to right and half the fibers vertically so if you have your pile to start with then it will make sure that you don't put too much um, going in one direction and don't have enough left for the other direction and you can take your time with this you don't need to rush nearly there just the last few bits I'm just looking for where there's areas that are thinner than other areas and I'm just making sure I use these last little tufty bits to fill in those gaps it doesn't have to be super perfect don't worry about that it just helps and you'll see why in a second when you come to wrapping up your body of your robin. So place your core inner with the head attached into the center and just wrap it up. Squidge that blanket around and press down with your hands now to get rid of any air and now you can start to felt. So when it comes to felting, I prefer to felt with the item I'm, I'm stabbing in my, in my hand. However, if you're a complete beginner and you're not sure and you think you might stab yourself, you can always put your sponge underneath. And if you put your sponge underneath, you can lay your thing that you're stabbing over the top and then it allows you to keep your fingers as far away as you want. And you can even tack that item down with a little dress pin or something in the corner and it will hold it in place while you're stabbing. Honestly though I think if you can try and just stab the item whilst it's in your hand you don't need to push the needle all the way through so you should never be in danger of going through the item to the other side and into the palm of your hand. Just to begin with gently quickly and all over turn in just just tack with the top just just touching the surface to begin just to get that mass of hair down because it's just so large it's barely even fitting on the film screen at the minute and just keep going keep turning 
And what you're aiming to do here is to push all the fibres together, begin the needle felting process and begin to shape it into an egg shape. So where we had kind of like a snowman, rounded body, rounded head, you now want to try and blend the, um, the collar area around the neck, blend that and turn the, the tip into more of a point. It might take you 20 minutes to half an hour to do this process. So I'm just going to probably shorten this down for when I, I do my demo video, but I'll just be tacking this now in the background. So you can join you can join me again when I've been doing this for 20 minutes. As you go along, use your hands to roll in all directions and your fingers to squash. Don't be scared to touch it. And that will help get rid of any needle marks on the surface as it starts to harden and compact, become more solid. You'll start to see the points at which the needle's gone in. So rolling it around and rubbing it and scratching it with your fingers will stop those... Um, get rid of, of those um, holes but it will also help it to, to get to this, the shape that we're aiming for and you should really start to see uh, it compact and solidify after just five to ten minutes of stabbing and it's really relaxing, addictive watch telly while you do this, though watch your fingers, you can chit chat, do it with friends listen to music I'm really compacting now, really got this egg shape and turn it on its side profile and you can start to see a bird shape begin to emerge still quite squashy and much of your felting stabbing will have been hopefully focused towards the head because that's that that's where you would have created this egg shape from so more squashy in, in the base and a little bit more firm towards the top so we're just going to now place this uh, to, to one side and we're going to make the beak and we're going to make the eyes. So for the beak and the eyes you're going to need your cup of tap water and your black wool. So all we're going to do is take a small piece of wool and I mean super small. Usually beginners make their eyes and their beaks too big so take what you think you need and then maybe halve it I would suggest but as a bit of a guide you're aiming to make the eye the size of a black peppercorn so if you feel like it's going to be bigger than a black peppercorn at any point then just pull a little bit away and it's really straightforward all you do is take a bit of wool take a bit of water from your cup dab the tiny you can see just damp water on the palm of my hand place the black wool in the center and very gently you don't need to apply any pressure it doesn't need to be firm not at the beginning just push the wool around you can add a little bit more water just with your fingers don't dunk dunk it into the water you don't need to be saturated you just want it to pick up the water as you go and it will gradually start to form a ball keep going each one might take you three or four minutes to make if you feel like you've got too much water in your hand because eventually you just don't want any wool water to be there because the, the wool has soaked up all the water that's there, just dry off your hand and come back and continue rubbing with no water in your hand and you can even rub between your fingers. Aim for a peppercorn but you don't want it so hard that you can't get a needle through it. So unfortunately this is going to be something you're going to have to try and check yourself your side and I'm kind of happy with this I think. It still feels a little bit squashy, it's not super hard, but it's the size of a peppercorn, a large peppercorn. And I'm going to do, you need to do two of these, one for each eye, and try and get them as much the same size as you possibly can. It's about the same size, one's slightly bigger, but that's okay, it's near enough. Now let's make the beak. For the beak it's the same process, take a little bit of black wool, a little bit more than you had for the eye but not much more, that's probably a little bit too much. And we're going to make, the best shape I can describe to you is a, a, a micro carrot, a mini carrot. So you're going to do exactly the same process, begin by circular motions to turn the black wool into a ball. But before it goes to peppercorn stage, you need to then roll it backwards and forwards. And so it's it's almost at the peppercorn stage, then going to start to roll backwards and forwards. And you can see it starts to elongate and turn into a beak shape. 
So this is the point you can make sure there's no more water on your fingers or your hands. And you can twizzle one point, one end, in between your thumb and your index finger and it will really take one end of it to a point. And you can see why I say micro carrot because one end is slightly fatter and rounder and the other end is more pointed. One beak! So in this stage I'm going to show you how to attach the beak and how to attach the eyes. So if you take your body, your body and your head with the head facing towards you and if you take your beak, we'll start with the beak, you can see I've just skewered a dress pin down, oops, down slightly at an angle, uh, down the beak which is going to allow me to fix it in position where I want it on the face and we're going to stab and see sort of central we're going to just stab the base the base of the beak where it meets the head I'm going to turn it and you want to stab it hoping you can see what I'm doing there stabbing through the black wool into the into the brown head and after a few stabs you should be able to take your fingers away and possibly even take the dress pin away and you'll see, you can pull to test, it's probably not um, fixed down enough yet but if you hold just the very end of the beak in position it will allow you to just, it's a bit tricky, to just stab a bit more and I counted how many stabs I needed to do to fix something in place and it's at least 100, 100 to 150 stabs and it might be more stabs for the eyes they are, can be a little bit tricky to, to to fasten down. You can even stab from this direction so you're going through the brown wool rather than the black into, into the black beak. It just needs to be knitted. All of this area needs to be knitted together. Okay, there we go. I'm happy with that for now. We can come back and tweak things later but for now I'm happy with that. It's really starting to take shape and look like a bird. So same process for the eyes. Take an eye skewer it like a kebab stick onto a dress pin position it where you want it and this is down to you it's up to your character do you want them to be closer together do you want them to be further apart do you want them to be online and horizontally with the beak or a bit higher i would say probably a slight diagonal angle up and not too much distance away same process again just carefully hold it in position with your fingernail if you can because the reason being that I will want to stick to the needle and it will want to pull away. After a few stabs it should stay in place. Keep going for around 100, 150 stabs. Again, just be super careful. It will be fixed in place. It won't necessarily be as fixed as you want it to be but it will be fixed enough that you are then able to continue stabbing without the dress pin. I'm just going to squeeze either side to help me pinch and hold it in place as I stab. As you're stabbing you'll notice that the area around the eye is starting to firm up and almost like an eye socket which is what you want. You do want that. You want the whole area not just the black center of the eye. You want the area around it to to, to, to dent in. This might take you five minutes for each eye by the way. And now for the second eye I'm actually just going to look at my bird from above and I can see it's not because I've stabbed on one side the other side has gone a bit wonky so I'm just going to before I attach my eye in position I'm just going to create my own eye socket in which it can sit and same as before position the eye have a look at it from all directions whether you're happy that it's straight and symmetrical then perhaps pinch from the left and the right to help hold it in place and stab. Okay, and now I'm kind of stabbing all around this area now and moving backwards away from the beak and the eye area, moving down the head. And you can see that a cheek is starting to form here, which is great. You've got another cheek on this side always be turning your robin and looking at it from above, underneath because there is an element of symmetry and you can start to move downwards and blend, always blending 
again back to the eyes you can really come and perfect this later on everything doesn't have to be perfect at this stage and in fact you don't want it to be perfect at this stage the next piece of shaping we're going to do is the belly on the underside and this wants to be really round the top needs to be more flat like this and the bottom needs to be round so to get the top flat I'm taking my fingers either side and I'm pinching him in pushing that in and I'm going to stab over the top area where I've pinched it in watch your fingers careful and you can turn it to the side profile and you'll be able to see that's now starting to flatten but I want it to flatten some more focusing around the underneath of the chin and I'm just making sure this bottom area is nice and rounded now we're going to attach the robin red breast so if you want to take your orange and your red wool provided in my kit. If you're working with your own bits and pieces at home, you might only have red, you might only have orange. I'd say two colours works best. And actually what i found is it, it works better with orange rather than red actually. There's just a real warmth, a real glow. So what we'll do first is attach some of the orange underneath and I'm going to be showing you how to blend, how to blend and get a really rich warmth of colour just like this one. You can see there's a nice mixture of red and orange and the way we achieve this is by putting orange down first a little bit more orange, go as thin as you possibly can with this and you can go just just above this neckline so it's basically to just underneath where his beak would sit and then you hardly need any felting at all, any tacking down this is almost like an undercoat or a first layer so just I'm only allowing my needle just to prick the top surface of the bird and you would like his, his um, fluffy chest to be nice and fluffy next take your red and we're going to put a layer of red and just try and do it in pieces as small as you possibly can a little bit like if you were painting you would just do little blobs of paint and just do a little at a time. You want this effect to be as natural as you possibly can. And once you've covered a section and you can go over the edges of the orange, it's nice for the orange to be focused towards the middle. Once you've done a, a section just start to tack that down before you continue and do more. And you can just scratch the surface as you go along just to intermingle the red with the orange with the brown and around the edges just gently you don't want to snap your needle just gently around the edges and we're just as I say tacking the surface you can pat it down with your thumb with your fingers as you go scratch 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 and then tack you don't want a solid line, you're trying to avoid having a solid line so if there are any stray bits of solid orange and red just scratch at them until you're happy and this might, you know, spend a bit of time doing this, this might take you 20 minutes, half an hour you might want to leave this bit, come back to it another day because it's a step, a stage all by itself I mean this is the nicest part of needle felting now where you've got all the basics, you've got all the, the elements down and, and you're just sort of tweaking and shaping and and you can see its face appear and I'm just spending a bit of time now stabbing everywhere it still feels a little bouncy so I'm just blending backwards with my needle finding areas that are still quite squashy just firming them up and shaping as I go turning it in lots of different directions from the top now what you'd be looking for is for 
from the eyes, from the point of the eyes, to come back and just have a dent. So I'm just going to stab from the point of the eyes backwards. And the same on the other side. And it should be really firming up now. So now we're going to make the feet. And I'll just show you the feet of this robin that I've completed here so you can hopefully see what it is we're aiming for. So it's two toes at the front two at the back. You're looking for about three centimeters of a leg and then with these toes at the front and the back and it'll just really help it stand up freestanding. Obviously we're going to make two of those with wire, with, with the florist wire, brown florist wire and the copper wire. So if you ordered a kit from me you'll have one of these foot templates in there so, so lift that out. Okay off we go. So you're going to be just following the line of the template. So if you start with your 30 centimeter brown florist wire, start with one end at point A and just bend as best you can around point B. If you're struggling to get it to bend on the paper then just make a, a sort of a, a kink in it so that you know where the bend is. Lift it up and just bend it with your fingers until you're happy with it and keeping it straight. This does not need to be perfect. You can see there it's just kind of, it wants to bend off in other directions. So I would, if I were you, the way I do it is just do it roughly to start like this, roughly and quickly. And you can see when I get to, s you can see when I get to C it roughly goes up to D. If your wire stops past D or somewhere in between C or D, don't worry about it it should be fine. Then when you lift it up and it's a bit springy that's when you can kind of just use your fingers or some pliers if you've got any pliers to hand, jewelry pliers, little pliers, tweezers might be good, I don't know. It's quite pliable as in it's it's bendy enough that you can kind of bend it with your fingers and just get get the corners as square as you can and the points as a bit more pointy and just try and get it flat as well because it'll as you're handling it it wants to bounce off in all kinds of directions okay and you'll see why shortly and just each time you kind of fix it just lay it back down and just check it's not too much different to the template that that's there okay so as I said you've got two toes front two toes back and you've got a little picture here as a reference I'm going to use these two fingers here to just hold down and kind of squish together a little bit the toes and the idea is points B if you can see B B and C you're lifting points B and C up so it might even be easier if you did it with this hand it's a bit fiddly whichever way is easiest for you either way you should have the toes at the bottom and then the uprights coming up off the paper they form the legs. So now you've got something like this with these two corners together. Don't worry if you can see mine don't quite meet there. You can, if you hold the toes together in these fingers here like this, you can kind of just maybe straighten and rebend them together because this is forming the top here. This section here is this section. So you're basically going to now just bend those two lengths back towards the foot. I'm going to bend the longest one in between the toes. Squish it down. And you should be left then with, and you can, you can kind of splay them apart. And play with them. You should then be left with a foot with a leg and an extra bit of wire. This extra bit of wire can then bend up and round if you imagine a, a bird has got an ankle. And I quite like to bend it back down and under the foot as well. It's going to give it strength, it's just going to finish it off. It's not supposed to be neat, you don't want to do this neat. The feet are a bit scratty, a bit scratchy, 
It's a nice contrast against the wall. Bend it into shape. Mine's kind of like this. And you can squash it, squash it down like this to get it flat and upright. Mess with it. And then the final thing that you're going to do now is to take some copper wire. If you got my kit, I've provided you some copper wire in there. If not, just get yourself, it doesn't have to be copper, it could be any colour, any kind of jewellery wire, anything like that. About 20 centimetres should be fine. And I'm just going to hold it at the bottom of the ankle or midway up the leg-ish. And I'm just wrapping it round, going under, weaving in and out the toes. There's no kind of exact way that you should be doing this. Just keep it scruffy, keep it messy. It'll add decoration, but it'll also add a bit of strength. There you go. And hopefully you can see there, kind of a bit like a spider's web. I've gone in and out, under and over, round and round, and that's one foot. So you just need to make two of those, and you're ready to move on to the next stage. So for this next step, we're going to take the little bit of extra wool that you put aside right at the beginning, if you remember when we did the wings, you're just going to take a little bit of this and we're going to add a little tuft to his head. Um, I would do this when you are happy with the shape. So if you keep looking at it and you keep thinking, oh, I'm not happy with the shape. And as I say, it could take you an hour. It could take you up to two hours, possibly more. Um, just enjoy doing it. Um, yeah, and when you're happy with the shape, that's when you're ready to add a little tuft to his head. And if I show you, just like this one here, it'll just add a little bit of height, a little bit of a crown, and a little bit of character. So I'm taking the smallest amount, and just take as small as you possibly can, I guess, to start with. You can always add to it. And I am just, actually I'm just licking my fingers, and I'm just wiggling. I'm not quite felting as much as we did with the eyes and the beak, but I'm getting it to a, a mess so that I can just... Like a, a hair piece, like a toupee, and just attach it centrally. Again, I'm just, can you see how far my needle is going in? Not very. Just tacking it down, tacking it down, blending the edges. I'm holding my needle right at the tip so that I'm not tempted to push down with any force. And you can keep going and you can keep prodding, keep tacking, keep prodding. But hopefully it should just very naturally, because this is such a natural wool, it should naturally just blend in. You can decide to have it lower, you can decide to have it bigger. But that's the tuft. Blend it backwards. And then you would do the same for the tail. Lick your fingers if it helps to kind of mesh, mesh the, the fibres together like something you've combed off your dog or your cat or something like that and the idea is that it's nice and fluffy and nice and messy and it'll just be a nice texture to contrast the solid body and the same technique position it centrally if you're looking down on your bird but then sideways I would go towards the the top but actually you can position it wherever you want it's up to you this is all part of the personality individuality and your style and this is what will make this robin personal to you you can keep scratching and then and then we'll do the wings so I already attached one wing here just to one side and I'm going to demonstrate now how to attach the other wing take your wing and you should have one side rounded and one side more pointy if you remember this teardrop shape template that we used to create it so the pointier side is the tip of the wing and the more rounded side is the bit that attaches to the body close to the eye uh, in terms of positioning if you can't tell the difference by the way then it doesn't matter just stick it on and we'll shape it when it's on um, positioning wise you want to be at the point where the eye and the head meets the body just is where the end is and where your rib breast comes round is where, where the wing would attach just, just there at the bottom as well. You don't want it to go uh, completely horizontal your wing, whoops, you don't want it to be 
going completely backwards like this, you want to have the wing going slightly upwards, slightly diagonal. If you're doing your second wing, then just make sure that it's aligned with the location, the positioning and the angle of, of the wing on, on the first side. And you can see it's quite big at the minute, but that just goes to show how much it shrinks when you start stabbing. So to attach the wing, and again, you don't need, like everything else that we've been tacking down, you don't need a lot of um, force, a lot of effort to go into pressing the needle down, but you're focusing the, the, the needle, the stabbing, towards this rounded area near the eye. Just do a few tacks and I'm, I'm, for me it works to take it along the centre of the wing and then to come back just scratch to pull the fibres out around the rounded section of the wing here and it should eventually just blend seamlessly into place. Around the bottom of the wing you want to also attach so keep, just do a running stab, stab line around the base. Keep turning, keep looking at how does that, how does that compare to the wing on the other side. You can see that's probably quite, quite symmetrical actually. It's in pretty much the same location. You can stab from this direction too. You don't always have to be stabbing from the same direction. And then over the top as well, if you look at your bird from the top, you can see this wing looks a little bit um, divorced, a bit disjointed from the main body of the bird, and you're wanting it to, to huddle in. So you can just run a line just across the top. Blend that in as gently as you can. And if your wing is a little bit long, too long, longer than the other one, I like to, can you see I'm pushing my needle down almost through the middle of the wing and I'm encouraging it to bunch up because you want it to be fluffy and wispy. And that fluffy and wispiness is also achieved by pulling away at the ends. So another technique I'm just going to show you that I usually use on my wings, you don't have to do this, it's up to you whether you have your wings solid or more fluffy. I'm going to take my scissors and I like, when I've attached both wings in position, I like to just put a few snips, like three or four, not many, just do one side then do the other. Just snip, snip, snip. And there'll be bits of the wing that probably just come away. is fine. You can dip your fingers in your cup, get them a little bit moist and kind of encourage them to come to a point combination of snipping and tweaking. Feathery, I think that's what you're aiming for, you want it to look as feathery and loose as, 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 you, as you can really. Okay, and that's how to attach the wings. Final stages now, we're going to attach the feet to the bird and hopefully he'll be freestanding and we'll attach the bow tie at the same time as the feet because he's going to be upside down. You can, if you want to carry on tweaking after this, you still will be able to. So even though it's the final stage I'm showing you, you will be able to come back. So take your cocktail stick and have your super glue handy. For the cocktail sticks, it's really the cocktail stick it's really handy because it helps you decide whether you want your bird facing down or whether you want him kind of looking up. This one, for example, he's kind of, if you see the feet, he's kind of facing down. And lots of robins, they might be facing down to peck at something, or they might be facing up if they're singing. I usually do them facing, sort of pecking at the floor a little bit like a chicken, but I think I'm going to do this one facing up. In which case, I'm just going to put my robin onto the cocktail stick 
and I'm just going to hold him up to myself, obviously this is flat for the demonstration, hold him up to myself and just check I'm happy with that location. If I'm not, you can either move the cocktail stick forwards or backwards down his belly to decide where you want the feet to go. I think I'm quite happy with them, like this location. Once you've done that, you just need to make two holes for his feet and it might be quite, depending on how much you've needle felted, it might be pretty compact and quite difficult to get the holes in there. I say just use the cocktail stick a bit like a hammer and just keep hammering away at it and making the hole bigger. You should then be able to fit these legs and feet in. If you can't, for whatever reason, if you're really struggling, just use the point of your scissors like this. Go in with the pointy scissors, wiggle it round and round and round till it goes in. And again, use it a bit like a hammer. Just make that hole as big as you possibly can. Sometimes when you take it out, it closes up and you're like, oh, I thought I just made a hole that's disappeared. Either way, make sure you've got yourself two holes that are kind of lined up and then you, you, your feet shouldn't be sort of front and back, that's kind of the same at the front, same at the back. Put your feet in. Try to close the wool up around them a little. Either use a cocktail stick or you can even just use your needle, your felt-in needle. We are going to glue them in place but you're just helping that wool to wrap itself around the legs. Yeah, they would come out if you pulled them, but for the moment they're in. And then also have ready your, if, you're, if you decided you want to put a bow tie, have that also ready. Just position where you want your 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 bow tie to go, your your dicky bow, whatever it is. Just position it where it's going to go, which should be just under the chin there. You could have it higher if you wanted to. I think they look silly. I think they need to be a little bit lower down. That location is fine to me. And then you're si simply all you are doing, and you don't need too much glue. If you go to do the legs first, rather than touching the glue directly onto the wall, if you just squeeze a few blobs down the leg, I'm hoping you can see it's actually just running down the leg into the wall. And I'd say about five drops, one, two, three, four, five. You don't need to touch it, just leave it upside down. For the bow tie, I would apply your glue to the back of the bow tie in a blob, rather than a, attaching um, touching the wool rubbing with, with, with the super glue because the nozzle I found tends to stick to the wool. And you can just use your cocktail stick to just press down on the top. It should only take about 15, 10 to 15 seconds to dry. If you put too much glue on, it'll just saturate this ribbon because the fabric will just soak it up. So you just put a little bit to start with. If you've not got enough on, you can come back and put some more. And that's already stuck. And the same for the legs. I would avoid touching with your fingers, but you can, and just be careful. Touch from the sides. Already, I think that's pretty stuck already. If when you go to stand him up, he probably needs a little bit longer to dry, but when you go to stand them up, if for whatever reason he's not freestanding, it's probably just because of the weight distribution. So you can just wiggle the toes, make sure sometimes if they're flatter, it's much easier for them to stand up than if sometimes if they're claw-like, curved, like, I don't know if you can see that, I've put that in kind of a curve there. If it's curved, sometimes they're not as easy to stand up as if they're flat, so go for flat. But yeah, try and maybe wiggle him either backwards or forwards on his feet. One way or another, he will stand up. I've not had one that doesn't stand up yet. I'm, um, I'm working on a curve, uh, on a slope here, so he's definitely not going to stand up on this slope here. But there you go, that is the tutorial for how to make a robin.